Sometimes I get up in the morning and I put on my lucky accounting shirt and I think, I wonder what I should talk about today. Well, I just finished putting together my depreciation playlist, which I'll link in the description. And I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to take those example assets and turn around and sell them so that we could do some journal entries together? I know, let's do that. Let's sell some assets and we'll see if we have a gain or a loss and then we'll do some journal entries. Welcome to Accounting How To. I'm your host, Carolyn Grimm, and that's my sidekick, Terrence the T Account Rex. And we're here to put the fun in accounting fundamentals. And we start off today with some new accounts. And you know, I should have like a new account siren alert. That would be really cool. Terrence, make a note of that. New account number one, gain on sale of an asset. You might also hear this called gain on sale of a fixed asset or gain on disposal of an asset. Different companies will call it different things, but it will be something close to that title. So gain on sale of an asset. So the account type for the gain on sale of an asset is other revenue. It's not regular revenue like we've had in all of our other videos. It is other revenue or other income. And that's a specific account type that tells our accounting software where to put this in our financial statements. We'll get back to that in just a moment. So because it is an other revenue account, it has a normal balance that is a credit. So we increase it on the credit side. We decrease it on the debit side when we're doing journal entries. New account number two. This is the flip side of new account number one. So this is called loss on sale of an asset or loss on sale of a fixed asset or loss on disposal of an asset. The account type for this is other expense. And again, this is a specific account type that's in addition to the five that we previously talked about, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses. So these other accounts are very specific account types that impact where they fall in our financial statements. So because it is an other expense, it has a normal balance that is a debit. So if we want to increase it, we increase it on the debit side, we decrease it on the credit side. Now, if we had investments and we sold those, we would have accounts to go with that called gain or loss on sale of an investment, and it would work the same. So other revenue and other expense accounts are accounts that track transactions that are not part of our normal business activities. And we want to separate out transactions that are not part of our regular day-to-day -day business activities. Because if we include those in net income or net income from operations, it makes us look more or less profitable than we actually are as a business. So we want to separate out, so we want to separate out items that are unusual or items that aren't part of our everyday business transactions. And the way that we do that on our financial statements is we use these other revenue and other expense accounts. And this causes our reports to drop those down below our regular net income, our net income from operations. So these turn up on our income statement below that net income line. So when we're talking about the gain or loss on the sale of an asset, we need to be looking at net book value at the time of the sale. So net book value is cost, what we paid for this asset, minus accumulated depreciation. So all of our adjusting journal entries that we've done that have impacted that particular asset, that's what we're, we're looking at. Our net book value is our cost minus our accumulated depreciation at the point that we sell this asset. So let's jump into the spreadsheet and we'll go through an example. So this is the spreadsheet that I used for the depreciation playlist, where we went through different sample assets looking at different depreciation methods so that we could see how different depreciation methods work, how to figure things, and then what to do with that information once we've put it together. So we're going to use that same spreadsheet. And of course, I'll put a link in the description so that you can either follow along or use it as a reference later on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through three different examples 
of selling an asset. I'll walk you through the journal entries for each one of those, and then I'll, I'll give you tips about how I work my way through these kinds of transactions. And I think that's gonna make things a lot easier for you. So we've got three assets that we're going to be selling. We have a 2015 Ford F-350, we've got a Hobart mixer, and we've got a forklift. So for each one of those sales, I've given you the specifics of what's going on here. So, so we're gonna sell the Ford F-350 at the end of year three for $20,000, and we based our depreciation on the double declining balance depreciation method. So we need to be looking at what the net book value for this asset was at the end of year three when we sold it. We don't care about year five or year seven because we didn't keep it that long. So when you sell an asset, part of what you need to do is you need to get it off the books. So we have right now this Ford F-350 that we paid $24,000 for. If we jump over to our double declining balance spreadsheet, we can see that in year three, we have accumulated depreciation of $15,000. $253. So jump back over here. Here's our $15,253 at the end of year three. That gives us a net book value of $8,747. So this is a snippet from our balance sheet. This is what this asset would look at the end of year three. So we're selling it for $20,000. The net book value is $8,747 and our accumulated depreciation, 15,253 cost 24,000. Those are the four pieces that make up our journal entry. So what did we get for this when we sold it? We got $20,000 in cash. So we're going to debit our cash account to increase it. What are we getting rid of? Well, we're getting rid of this $24,000 asset. So an asset has a normal debit balance. In order to take it off the books, we need to credit that. So we're going to credit Ford F-350, our asset account, for $24,000. Now, we have accumulated depreciation sitting on the books as well, and we need to make that go away. So accumulated depreciation is one of those tricky contra accounts so it works the opposite of its parent account. So its parent account is an asset. So it is a contra asset. It works the opposite of a regular asset. So right now we have a credit balance in that accumulated depreciation account of 15,253. So to get rid of a credit balance, we need to debit it. So we're gonna debit accumulated depreciation. So that's three pieces of our journal entry. The fourth piece, is the determining factor as to whether or not we have a gain or a loss. So I'm gonna show you my shortcut for figuring out whether it's a gain or a loss. What did you get? You got $20,000 in cash. What's the net book value? It's 8747. So do we have a gain or a loss? Did we get more or less than our net book value? Well, we got more, we got a lot more. So we have a gain on the sale of that asset and it is 11,253. So the quickie way to look at this is to take what we got, our cash, and subtract the net book value. And that gives us this gain on the sale of an asset. You could also approach it this way. If you look at your debits and you add those up and then subtract your credits from that, you're gonna find the difference between the two on that journal entry, and that will tell you where you need to plug in the number. But the easiest way to look at it is, what did we get for cash, and what's the net book value? And that's gonna determine whether it's a gain or a loss. So in this case, we have a gain on sale of asset of 11,253. When we post this journal entry to our accounts, we now will have 20,000 more in cash, that Ford F-350 asset will be off the books, the accumulated depreciation that's associated with it will be off the books, and we will have a gain on that sale of asset, other revenue of 11,253. Let's go to asset number two, our Hobart mixer. So this is a $5,000 property, 
five years and it had a salvage value of zero. So let's take a look at this transaction. We sold that Hobart mixer at the end of year five for $500. And we did this using straight line depreciation as our method of depreciation for this asset. So if we jump over to our straight line tab to our Hobart mixer, at the end of five years, we had $5,000 in accumulated depreciation. So we sold this when we had fully depreciated it. So jump back to our sale tab. So here's our Hobart mixer. At the end of that five-year period, we paid $5,000 for it. It is fully depreciated. Our net book value is zero. So we turned around and sold this for $500. So let's do our little quickie math here. What did we get? We got $500. What's the net book value? It's zero. Is 500 greater than zero? Why, yes, it is. So that tells me right away that we had a gain on the sale of that asset. So just like with the last example, we're going to record our cash. We got $500. We want to take the cost of that asset off of our books. So we're going to credit that asset by $5,000. And then we need to debit our accumulated depreciation to cancel out that credit balance, $5,000. And then our gain on the sale of that asset is $500. So let's look at our forklift. What happened with our forklift? Well, we sold the forklift after year two for $1,000, and we were using double declining balance depreciation method for this asset. So let's jump over to our double declining balance tab, and let's look at our, and let's look at our forklift. So we sold this after year two. So year two accumulated depreciation was $5,120. So we come back here on our balance sheet snippet, we've got a forklift that we paid $8,000 for. We have at the end of year two accumulated depreciation of $5,120. And our net book value at the end of year two is $2,880. So what did we get for this? We got cash of $1,000. We need to take the asset off our books by crediting it for $8,000. We need to take our accumulated depreciation off the books by debiting it $5,120. Now let's stop there and look at what we got for cash and what the net book value was. Did we get more or less than the net book value? Well, we got less because this was a, an accelerated depreciation method. We recovered more of our costs up front. So we're able to get $1,000. So we're selling this at less than what our book value is, which means we have a loss. So you'll see here our final piece of this uh, transaction is that we have loss on sale of an asset, our other expense category here. So we're going to record that as a debit. So once we post this to our accounts, what we're going to see is an increase in cash. We're going to see a decrease in our assets and our accumulated depreciation. And we're going to see an, an expense called loss on sale of asset down below our net income line. So when I'm doing a transaction like this, I'm going to look at what I know first. Do I know what the cost was? Do I know what the accumulated depreciation is at that point in time? Do I know what the net book value is? So start with what you know. We know when we sold the forklift that we got $1,000. We know what our depreciation method was. Um, we know what the cost was because it's on our books. And we were able to determine what the accumulated depreciation was based on that depreciation schedule that we had come up with. So that allowed us to figure out what, whether we had a loss or a gain on the sale of that asset. Once you fill in the pieces of what you know, this becomes a much easier transaction to track. My biggest tip, my favorite thing to do, is to look at what we got for cash versus that net book value number, because that's gonna tell me whether it is a gain or a loss. And so there you have it, gain or loss on sale of an asset handled. Until next time, stay balanced, my friends.